Hey everybody, this is part two of uh, the video series I've made about the YV3030 vibraphone as a small option, as a traveling vibraphone uh, that's easy to uh, carry around in one piece for gigging. The pickup system that I designed myself for this instrument, in this video I'm going to show you exactly how I made that and how I was able to create a pickup system for no more than a hundred dollars. If you buy a professionally made K and K system or other, that'll cost you fifteen hundred dollars for some of the pickup systems that are available. So uh, this may be a good option for me. It turned out to be a great option, and it and it sounds really good and it's working really well. So. All right, here we go. This is what we're starting with. Um, it's just basic cable management system that I bought on Amazon, and it just works perfectly to create the rails for the pickups. It just simply comes like this, and um, you extend these sections together, so we'll see, we'll have longer sections. But the holes are already cut out, and they fit perfectly for the uh, 1 8 inch or 3.5 millimeter phone jacks that we're using, which are the normal thing you would use on a pickup system. And this top just comes off. It just snaps on. It comes apart. And so let's get to one that I'm working on. This stuff, this box was about $24 for this stuff, and it's more than enough rail. So here's one we're starting to work on. I've got a couple of jacks installed, and they just fit perfectly. So first of all, um, these are the jacks I'm using. I'm not going to list anything, but I'm going to try to get so you can read it. These are MJ164H sockets, 3.5 millimeter, two pole, uh, Farnell. I got them from Newark.com. There's a couple of places, but I found that Newark had the best um, selection of items. And what these are is they're just one eighth inch jacks, two connections. Very simple, and the amazing thing is they fit perfectly into these spacers. So you gotta take this off. So when you go and take the nut off the bottom, they just pop right in. So this actually works as the proper spacing here for the bars, the one and a half inch bars. And this will just pop in, I can just put it in there, and it's gonna stay, which is unbelievable. So you could get away without putting the nut back on if you wanted, but why, you know, of course you want it secure. So we're just going to add the nut on here. This part is a little annoying because it's a little hard to do this, but it gives you such a nice finished look using this type of jack that we just do this. And what I was using is a something like um, fine pliers or this whatever you call this thing, a, uh, a clip, and, it, and just be able to turn this until it's solid. And then you want to, you can turn these and line these up so they'll be easy enough to solder. Now, what you're also noticing here, the first thing I started with is some foil tape, some copper foil, and this is for electromagnetic EMI shielding. And, you know, it just can't hurt. A lot of pickup systems are in an aluminum rail. These are plastic rails. They're nice and lightweight, which we want. But why not add a little shielding in there just in case you get into a situation? You don't want your whole pickup system to act as a giant antenna. You really have to follow the um, the rules for audio connections. I did try some other connectors to see if that would work, and it seemed it was going to create shielding problems. So you need to stick with, that's why you're sticking with these 3.5 millimeter jacks because they're all shielded and adding a little copper shielding is what you're going to want to do. All right, so one problem that I had with the cable management system as a frame for the, the pickups is that these connectors are extremely wanky, these ones that are supposed to connect the sections together. And if you could see, those little clips are supposed to go to each end of each section. And what it does is it changes the spacing, which you don't want to do. So I made this simple solution of just using some cable ties going through. Hopefully you can see this well. 
putting the cable ties through the holes, easy enough, holding these sections together. And then what'll happen is when you put it on the instrument, if you use this adhesive, this company says that you can use the adhesive, and if you use a heat gun, it'll come right off without damaging the surface. Awesome. So uh, let, I'll, I'll do that. Why not? And um, should hold these very sturdy. This stuff is like flexible. It's, it's, it's very great. Like the lightweight, everything should be lightweight. So here you go. And now one other way that you're going to, so you're going to stabilize it another way, which is the sticky. When it sticks on, then it's set. It's all going to be together. You got the cable ties on there. And then actually this stuff, when you clip this over the top, if you stagger it a little bit over the seams, this holds things together as well. So you just clip this buddy on right here at some point. There you go. And now it's like a really nice, completely solid rail. I mean, everything you want it to be, to be simple, portable, and you can flip, take this off if you need to deal with any electronics. But otherwise, the idea here is that this is just staying on the instrument. Bars aren't coming off. So one thing that is super cool about using this cable management uh, track for um, the pickup system as a, as a rail is that it's also flexible and bendable to an extent. So look at this. So that means, so see how I can do this with it. I can bend it back. You don't want to do too much and then it'll straighten out again. But that means that if you want to reposition your pickups, if you have uh, one in here, so fact that they're bendable means that you can lose you can get this out if you want to reposition your pickups once it's all wired you're not going to be able to take things apart but you could loosen the wing nut here and bend it back enough that at some point if you ever needed to and you needed to re-space for a different instrument you would be able to do it you would without having to desolder any of the connections so that's a that's a cool plus to this because if you took it off of one instrument and wanted to resize it for another one, like Yamaha, Musser, the sizings are different, you'd be able to do that after the wiring is done. Um, of course, very carefully, but it's possible. So yeah, you're going to definitely need to get some kind of a workstation and be able to do a little bit of soldering. It's not that hard, but you'll need to set up. So there's what the rails are looking like. And basically the wiring is very simple. You're just gonna connect all the reds together and connect all the ground shields together. And it's gonna just chain along. So reds connected to reds all the way and grounds. So here we have finished rail with the cover on it. It's always good to check that the fit is right to the instrument. This is not the instrument I'm going to install on, but these are the one and a half inch bars on my other instrument, and I can see that I'm pretty good here. But if you need to move things, you can move these slots. So the piezo sensors come looking something like this, and the first thing you're going to want to do is to coat them with a black silicone, if you can see this, to cover up that top so that where they're soldered on is all protected. That's, that's step one. And you're gonna use something like this, this black sealant. All right, so here are the pesos that I'm using. I bought these really cheap, like 20 of them was like five or six bucks. I got Amazon. The only problem, so I wanted to use smaller ones. These are 10 millimeter, and I wanted to use the smaller ones. Let's see if we can get that to focus. I've already put the backing on these um, because I feel like the smaller ones have a little less plunkiness in the sound. Here is uh, one from the Vanderplast system that is similar to what also is on K&K. &K. Um, this is a little larger. Maybe this is 16 millimeter or something. But 
I feel do feel like the less contact with the bar, maybe the less plunkiness you're going to get. And um, so I'm trying this out with the smallers. So again, the problem is that the the wires, if you buy them pre-wired, these wires are just too short. Uh, they're very short, and they they I didn't want to extend them. They end up working out. And since this pickup system is going to be permanently installed, I'm not going to be taking it on and off all the time. They'll be fine. Once you solder them on, they're secure, and this length is actually fine. However, if you want to take the pickups on and off the instrument, I recommend that you get maybe larger um, uh, pesos, which come sometimes with longer wiring. Make sure they've got, if they're pre-soldered, make sure that these leads are longer because this type of length is what you're really going to need if you're putting it on and off the instrument all the time and you need to make sure uh it's solid wire this wire is real thin and so again it's going to be fine if i leave it on the instrument but for taking it on and off all the time uh you need something slightly more robust if you can get it now one important thing though is you need to either use shielded cable or you need to twist this very very well so as you twist it it will help reject the electromagnetic interference so that when i have a final one here i've twisted the wires very tightly together if you can see that and then also in there uh i've used some shrink tubing black shrink tubing to hold it all together now you can also add a layer of shielding but it makes them bulky, and I find uh, I found that it really doesn't need it, that these will be fine and will not create any noise if you do it carefully like this and really twist the wires like that. So I started with these 10 millimeters, and they are not really good enough. The, the wires are just too thin, and when you bang on them, it, it did uh, sound pretty good with a smaller pickup, but I recommend you got to go to at least a 15 to 18 millimeter piezo and you got to really use some robust cable microphone cable and really solder it on good nice holding before you put on the black silicone because these take a beating you're beating on them with mallets so make these as strong as you can make them that's what i would suggest the other thing about the piezos is that the larger size going to 15 or 18 millimeter gives you more adhesion. So using a slightly larger piezo, like a 15 to 18 millimeter, it helps it also stick on the bar better. There's more surface area so that the uh, super glue will hold. So my final, final choice for the actual piezo pickups are these 15 millimeters and then get that you got to really get that uh sealant on there real good so that you're really like keeping the cord you want to be sealing the cord onto it so that it can't pull out at all got to make these suckers really strong and uh it's well worth it I did experiment a little with making some smaller, lighter weight pickups um, by just twisting the wire. It seems to help the bar vibrate better to have a very flexible wire as opposed to a thicker wire. So experiment with how your pickups come out and how they sound. Um, I, I'm still trying to decide for myself whether it makes a real difference in the vibration of the bar. So with these particular 3.5 millimeter uh, end plugs I'm using, they have a strain relief here. We're just going to cut that off. And that way, just with some snippers like this, that way it's a little shorter. I want to be able to plug this in and this will make, make that easier. Here you go. This is pretty much the operation. You're going to slide on the cap. Uh, onto the pickups and then you're going to solder these leads on the red lead goes to that center pin and the black goes to the side and I use this a little of this strain relief if I can and you turn it into a pickup 
end result. Here's one that's finished. Again, these are short. All right, so you're just gonna try to do your best soldering. And this one looks pretty good. These leads are very small. If you're careful, you can get them pretty good. And just make sure that the center red lead is completely isolated. And that's, that's it, they're pretty short. You screw this cap back on now. And there you go. Here's a pickup ready to go. It's very short on the lead, as I said before. All right, here we go. We're going to do a test now. And this is really key just to test everything. Here's the little mixer we're going to use. This is the same mixer that um, is used on the Vanderplast system. It's just a Behringer. This uh, MX400. It's a great low noise mixer. And you should, you know, get no hum here. I've got it turned up really loud. I've got it into like a little test amplifier. And, you know, it's quite loud. And now I've got a few of these pickups attached. And you should just tap them. They should give you a clean signal on the tap. And you know you're good to go. So this, uh, this is working great. Yeah, I did not put a volume in the line of each of these. Some Most pickups do that in order to equalize the volume. But I found that basically um, you don't need to do that. Most of the pickup, it's like very close to the same level off of every pickup. And if it doesn't have the same level, then something's wrong. The pickup's messed up. So I found that you don't need a volume control in there. So one thing I recommend doing before installing pickups is that you, when you're going to attach them to the bar, you scrape up a little spot on every node because when you scratch it here with a razor or some fine grit sandpaper, it will help the super glue to adhere and it'll keep them on there real good, which is what you want for sure. All right. Standard operating procedure getting the pickups on the bars with a little super glue. That's how all systems work. Okay, first rail is in place here. So you can see I, I made a little modification here because it was very tight when you added the resonator back in. So no problem. We have one longer pickup here. And on the highest bar there, we'll just scoot the pickup over and to the end of the rail to the next note. So the F will plug in basically underneath the E, but that won't make any problems. There you go. Ready for the bars. This worked out pretty cool. Putting the mixer on, just use some magic tape and just one screw as to not damage the fra frame very much. It comes up from inside the case and hold that on great. So it turns out that there's not tons of space down there when you want to put the pickups on the inside rail. And the reason I chose to do that was because I don't want the outside of the instrument to have anything that could get ripped off when it gets transported. And also, I got the mixer down there, so it would not be good to have a rail of pickups here. So best to put these on the inside this is what I'm hoping will work and space is tight so I'm just taking these putting them on one at a time and plugging them in from the top like this it seems to be the easiest way it's an easy way to put this back on and by the way this instrument is designed to keep the bars on which is what's making this work it's got these double hooks you know it it was it gets delivered from the factory with the bars on in one box so that that's perfect because you want these all to stay on here with the pickups and you're going to transport it and you don't want the open um, grommets that are going to let the string come out. So right here is just a little project box that I found on Amazon. These are about $3 maybe. And it's small, just like 
couple inches wide. And we're gonna take the front plate off. And here's where I'm gonna create a jack panel with two um, quarter inch jacks. I'm gonna install. Here's the, the quarter inch jack we're gonna use that's gonna connect. And from here, it's a junction box that you can do a short patch cable to go to the mixer or go directly into any other um, preamp that you would like to use. It's just, this is just the output of each rail. Completely passive, no uh, amplification or, or preamp on it at all. Okay, the junction box is now in place and the wiring, you barely see the pickup rails at all from the front now. And all the wiring is in place. So here's the junction box for the rails on the instrument and basically just goes to the other end where the mixer is.